Yo, what is going on everybody? So welcome back to another YouTube video and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to basically turn on XMP properly in your RAM so you're running it at the right speed that you bought it for. So what is XMP? So XMP is extreme memory profile. You could think of it as a factory overclock that should run but sometimes it's not going to run fully stable. So this is what this video is about. I'm going to make sure it's stable and we're going to make sure we're actually running at the speed that we bought it for. So this is very, very prominent on RAM sticks that are 4,000 megahertz or RAM sticks that are like 4,400 4, megahertz or even DDR5. So I'm gonna touch DDR5 very, very briefly just right now. And we're gonna move on to DDR4, which is way a little bit more complicated. But DDR5 is really simple. You wanna make sure you're only on two sticks of RAM. Do not run four. Four just puts way too much strain on the motherboard and it just lowers this. You have to lower the speed of the RAM constantly or do something in order to make sure that the RAM is stable on XMP. If you don't wanna deal with that, stick to two sticks of RAM on DDR5 and just basically if you want the best motherboard for DDR5 I'll link it down below it's the ITX motherboard from MSI that one you'll able to do 7800 megahertz on the RAM completely fine and you won't have any issues booting that up with those sticks but that's for DDR5 now basically for the speed you want to make sure you're on gear 2 and BIOS for DDR5 you'll figure out what this is by just going to BIOS and within the DRAM settings you'll see something called DRAM gear mode or gear mode you want to make sure it's just gear 2 now for ddr4 you want to make sure you're on gear 1 but this is just prominently more on intel and if you're on 11th generation of intel or above this is what you need to watch out for but if you're 10th gen intel or under or ryzen you don't really need to worry about it for ryzen you need to worry about something else that's it for ddr5 so all you need to do and you just need to test your ram as well don't buy high-end sticks if you're going to get a lower end motherboard it's, they're just not going to work together perfectly fine so Let's make sure our speeds are running at what we bought them for. So basically install CPU-Z and then just choose zip English and download it. And basically just open it up, run CPU x64.exe and wait for it to load. And we're basically just going to be checking the speeds of the RAM. So click memory at the top. You want to multiply this by two to get your RAM speed. So if you have 3000 megahertz right here, if you're on DDR5, it'll, it's 6000 megahertz speed. Now for Intel, you might have have somewhere around here I'll throw up a picture of what Intel would look like but if you're on 11th generation or above there's gonna be memory controller frequency and if you're on DDR4 you want to make sure that DRAM frequency and memory controller frequency are the same speed make sure they are the same number if not if they're not the same number you want to go to BIOS and change the DRAM gear mode to gear 1 that's if you're on DDR4 and 11th generation Intel or above now for DDR5 it's gonna be half of your DRAM frequency that's perfectly fine that just means you're on gear 2 just make sure you're not on gear 4 for whatever reason but most motherboards won't default to gear 4 so you shouldn't really worry about that now for Ryzen this is a little bit different right now as you can see I am on Ryzen, so I can show you guys perfectly what I'm talking about. So DRAM frequency and Encore frequency, you wanna make sure these two are the same. Now we wanna make sure these two are the same because this means that our FCLK, AKA our Infinity Fabric is one to one ratio. And if it's not one to one ratio, we're basically getting lower speed from our RAM. So basically for Ryzen, keep this rule in mind. If you're on Ryzen fifth gen or under, don't go 4,000 megahertz. So basically stick to 3,800 megahertz or under otherwise 4000 megahertz or 3900 megahertz is out of sync it's one to two ratio instead of one to one with the FCLK which isn't great now if you are on 3800 megahertz you want to make sure your FCLK is half of that so it's one to one ratio so if you're on 36 megahertz 3600 megahertz you want to make sure your FCLK is set to 1800 megahertz and you just want to do that in BIOS but yeah, you want to make sure XMP, first of all, is on before you do any of this. If XMP is still not on, you want to go back to BIOS and turn it on and make sure it boots up. If it doesn't boot up, that means you're either the sticks you have are way too fast for your motherboard. You might need to lower down the speed or your sticks are just bad. You need to go replace them, get different ones that are better. And I'll, for that, I'll leave some DDR4 sticks and DDR5 sticks in the description and you can pick either one. It depends on which one you want, obviously, but make sure that is on and then just go back and to CPU-Z and make sure the DRAM frequency is actually set to the proper frequency. And again, CPU-Z is just gonna show half of the speed. So you just multiply it by two and you get the DRAM frequency that you bought it for. But it's pretty much it for Ryzen. Let's go to testing our RAM. 
All right, everyone, so this step is honestly optional, but it's highly, highly recommended by me. I personally do this if my RAM is on XMP and it's kind of a decent high speed. I wanna make sure it's 100% not causing issues. So what we're gonna be doing right here is stability testing our memory sticks. Now we're doing this just so if there are any errors within our RAM, we're gonna make sure that we get those fixed and we don't suffer performance loss because if you have unstable RAM, you're gonna be suffering with a lot of issues like lower FPS, higher input lag, inconsistencies within the game and crashing here and there. So you wanna make sure that your RAM sticks are stable. This is the same thing for DDR5, but basically click the link in the description. It's gonna take you to test memory five download page. We're gonna download this and then we're gonna click show in folder right here. All right, so once you have it showed in folder, we're gonna basically right click on it click extract here or extract all with whatever you're using extract here double click the folder that it makes and double click tm5 that exe so it's gonna start loading up your ram completely but this is not the ram test that we want to be using this is the simple ram test it's gonna take a while for it to actually find errors you want it finding errors kind of quick so click load config and exit and then go to where the the folder is located double click bin and you see extreme anta double click this and then double click tm5 again by the way you want to make sure you're running this as administrator so when i exit this right click on it click run as administrator and basically let this run for about it depends on how much gigabytes of ram you have but if you're on 16 gigabytes it's going to take about three hours and if there's no errors after three hours you're perfectly good to go your ram is stable and if you do have errors you want to make sure that you want to you're running at the right speed that your ram you bought it for don't overclock it unless you know what you're doing and if you don't know what you're doing don't overclock it just set it to xmp if it's crashing or having errors on xmp you want to lower the speed a little bit by 200 megahertz or 400 megahertz or just keep lowering it until you find a stable speed but yeah this is a tedious process it is going to take a long time especially on if you're on ddr5 it's just just because that is like 32 gigabytes of ram and the more gigabytes of ram you have the longer this is going to take but this is really good for spotting out issues like fps issues input lag issues and just crashing issues so that's pretty much it for this whole video guys if you want this tested for you if you want recommendations personally for your motherboard and pc contact me on twitter or just book an optimization service i literally give upgrade advice all the time after i'm done with my service regarding cpus motherboards ram gpus and things of that nature and i spot out issues like high temperatures overheating and things of that nature and we get them fixed but that's pretty much it for this video guys subscribe down below leave a like and if you want more things like this, comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.